Lions. We don't need to be asking for, oh, please, God. So I'm curious. It's a great entry point for a lot of people who are just like exploring socialist material. One, because virtually everything that you search online that is a Marxist web page with. I take uh, some literature. Uh, you can of read course, a trot is selling a newspaper. Of course. Yeah, but it is for sale. Yeah, for That's sale. free though. It's for sale. Pamphlets and newspapers. I know. In a capitalist country. Capitalism. It's just beautiful because like it'll only take maybe maximum one more election cycle for most of those guys to openly be voting for whoever the right wing candidate is anyway. How much is it? <laughs> it depends. So that's all under five bucks. Paper's five bucks. I think we can afford that. I would say so. Let's uh, get my, get my wallet. Somewhere we can get uh, we got Venmo uh, cash app. Got the way. I like this. See, the communists have Venmo. They've got all the digital infrastructure. I like that. Well, we can do cash. What's your best book? Oh, best book? Well, let's see. I don't want to give you one you might use. Uh, here, how about if you want to know what we're about, brother? That's good. Absolutely. Good. What's this one about? This is our paper. We write this and we produce it monthly. How much is this? Also $5. Right here, bro. Right. Dude, he, like, dude, every communist group has this guy, okay? The most intense, the most intense ginger you've ever seen in your entire life, dude. With trots, of course, they're selling $5 newspapers. I mean, no, it's perfect. This is incredible. Sorry, thank you. This is like a left book meme come to life, dude. Cool. Thank you. So, let me ask you. Uh, my, here's my issue. This is one of my issues with Kamala Harris. I want your perspective on it. I think she has two uh, your two issues. She has not stated her actual policies, and the reason I respect somebody like Bernie Sanders more than I respect Kamala, and I've said this in numerous occasions. I'm not saying it just right now, is if you have convictions, at least stand by them. If you believe in single payer health care, if you believe in an effective national health care system for all, then stand by it. But why adopt those positions four years ago only to back off of them today? I, I could disagree with you, but at least have the position and stick to it. That's sort of what my criticism is. And my suspicion is there might be some counterintuitive alliances between the so-called far left and actually segments of the so-called far right that want to stay out of form, that want to end crony. I mean, he knows his audience. He's going to the trust, dude. He's like, he's like, yeah. Think about how wonderful it would be if there was this like this allegiance, you know, a permanent international revolution, if you will, with like right wingers and also left wingers, you know, capitalism and lobbying and government capture to say that, you know what, there might be ways where you may not agree with 100 percent of what I say or what Donald Trump says, but you don't have to agree with 100 percent of what somebody says to think outside the box and vote a little bit differently. But what do you think? I actually you said I want to, you know, I am here to, to listen a little bit. So I'd love to hear your guys's perspectives on why you're here and why you have your own disappointments with the current direction of the this is going to be able to represent us they can't be pressured into representing us because we don't pay their bills we don't pay kamala's trumps we don't pay yours because they all have financial backers that's why we need a workers party to take down the two ruling class parties one that doesn't have funding from these big businesses this is what so many y'all sound like like in the chat all the time and it's instead funded by its membership yeah i mean you, you realize the convention here i don't need to preach to you then my friends in a trust guy call and everyone is forced to give 10% of their wage to the org and is spearheaded by a man convicted of sexual assault and accused of rape. I mean, but they, I mean, who buys the sweets, right? Talking about populist talk from the floor of the convention, stand up for the workers and break up the very companies that are sponsoring the whole event, right? So there's a bit of a paradox there. But, you know, all I would say is... A paradox in what exactly? Of controlled rhetoric right you have a lot of corporate interests controlling the way in which they actually assail those very corporate interests which is kind of interesting it is it, i think we might be saying something similar it's all a bit of a charade yeah so, I, so I, I would say one thing that is definitely we're not similar on is you were talking about unification of like the far right and the far left there is no yeah this isn't baba vakian this is rca this is revolutionary communists of america not the revolutionary communist party revcoms are a different type of cult Revcoms are way worse than these guys. Like the the uh Revcoms are the dudes that are the crustiest at every protest. Anytime you go to a protest and you see crust, like you see an aura of crust, like a dust bowl in the center, and you see a dude wearing like a uh, like a newsboy hat or like some steampunk getup and like the outfit is is just all black and they have like these uh printed out uh, they have these pamphlets as well, okay? And they don't even know what the protest is about. It could literally be like, march for our lives. It could be an anti-gun rally. 
but they're there and they're like, hey, you should come to this other rally tomorrow that we're having. Those are the Revcoms. Okay. They are, there is a guy, there is every protest. They are there. Okay. Steampunk looking, crusty, constantly trying to get you to go to another rally. Okay. It's like, bro, we're here for this rally. Why the f are you trying to get me to go to another rally? What do you mean? That's because they love co opting. Okay. They don't personally give up about anything other than pushing other than pushing Bo chairman Bob Avakian. Okay. The revolutionary communists of America is the rebranded internationalist uh, international Marxist tendency. There is a lot of history of essay allegations with them. Trots on the other hand, will always set up a booth no matter where you are. And in that booth, they will be selling newspapers. They love writing newspapers. Okay. They are the pamphlet. They are the pamphlet party. Okay. PSL moment? No, I would never consider PSL to be in line with any of these guys. Obviously, all of these, uh, all of these, you, uh, all of these groups have uh, similar issues, whatever. But overall, I would not consider PSL to be anywhere near, uh, anywhere near as bad as like revolutionary communists. Like they're Baba Vakian said the word is worse than the N word. My goaded feminist. There's another breed of them too. They're like 65 year olds with fedoras and cargo shorts. Yes. Do not go to a second location with a Revcom. Yes. I'm asking, you know, I don't know about unification, but there may be some common threads. Well, we would say this, that there is no perfect American communism, American socialism like this, you know, these yeah. other little parties popping up. It has to be international. We aren't here for the success mm -hmm. of American uh, of American working class because the only way we can be there for the success of the American working class is the international working class, working class in Canada and in Mexico. If you had some, and now we don't believe in this, but let's say there was some perfect, uh, you know, socialist America, it would immediately get pushed out by China, by Russia, by Europe. So we need an international socialist revolution in order to secure a true victory for the working class. Woo! Vivek, what are your reparations for black Americans? So here's my perspective. I was asked about this when I came to the south side of Chicago a year ago, and my position on this has not changed. Vivek does not give a, okay. My man said, my man said we need an international workers union because any other kind of like uh, socialist momentum happening in any individual country is going to be immediately squashed. Uh, you know, socialist America, it would immediately get pushed. Like, I feel like you just skipped a couple steps there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm just saying, like, there's a, there's, there's a bunch of steps that you just skipped. To, to arrive at this magical place that you arrived at. by China, by Russia, by Europe. So we need an international socialist revolution in order to Like, I like that he's saying, he's saying that like, wait, hold on, we gotta run this again, hold on. popping up, it has to be international. We aren't here for the success of American, uh, of American working class because the only way we can be there for the success of the American working class is the international working class, working class in Canada and in Mexico. If you had some, and now we don't believe in this, but let's say there was some perfect, uh, you know, socialist America, it would immediately get pushed out by China by Russia, by Europe. So we need an international socialist revolution in order to secure a true victory for the working class. Woo! Vivek, what well, are I your understand. reparations for black Americans? So here's my perspective. I was asked about this when I came to the south side of Chicago a year ago, and my position on this has not changed, is I'm against race-based reparations because I think it will create more division, <laughs> What about race-based discrimination? Wait, what does that have to do with anything my man just said, what the f he just skipped it. He was like, uh, this is confusing. I don't care. What about, what about race-based reparations? That occurred in this country for yes, I think it changed. No, I, I was asked about this when I came to the socialist revolution in order to secure a true victory for the working class. Woo! Vivek, what well, are your Charleston reparations for black Americans? Like he, she jumped in. He was like, thank God. Okay. He was like, okay, we're moving on from what you just said, which I have no input in whatsoever. I'm going to dial in on the fucking, I'm going to dial in on this other question. So here's my perspective. I was asked about this when I came to the South side of Chicago a year ago. And my position on this has not changed is I'm against race-based reparations because I think it will create more division. What about race-based discrimination that occurred in this country for? Yeah. So I'll, let me, let me just clarify one aspect. Oh. I think there was a time and place for it in the reconstruction era. But today, when we actually bring back racial reparations, it actually causes greater discrimination, not more. I think we're seeing a wave, a rise in anti-black and I think other forms of the country. But part of the reason I think we're seeing it is there's no better way to foster racial animus than to take something away from someone based on their skin color. So don't give black people country? justice because it'll make other people upset. Well, because it's going to create more division and be self-defeating. I think it's actually going to set black Americans back. 
because it will cause. I mean, I actually. But black Americans continue like you, to live in that yeah, sector. I want to move out of. The, I want to move out of the middle of this. Yeah, just because yeah. I feel like. So let me say this. Uh, yeah. your so question. Yeah. you are not going to be able to solve this problem under capitalism. You're always going to be coming up with these little band-aid issues. That is why the only way to truly get reparations for the people, for the black Americans in this country, is a socialist revolution. Is by seizing the means of production and letting that community give themselves reparations. We don't need to be asking for. Oh, please, God. So I'm curious. It's a great entry point for a lot of people who are just like exploring socialist material. One, because virtually everything that you search online that is a Marxist web page with things written on it will almost always be operated by a trot. Okay? These are in the socialist movement, these guys are like the archivists. Okay? Every website that you go to, marxist.org communism.org whatever the f they are the scribes they literally they literally own all of those all of those websites okay that's why so many people also then uh get heated and have these kinds of perspectives and and uh it's like it's like entry level uh excitement for a movement which i think then i don't know i i i think that it it inevitably turns into uh nihilism and then i don't know you just somehow become deluded and you become republican overall i don't have an issue with anyone that is i don't have an issue with anyone that is an anti-capitalist it's great it's just you know i'm i'm more of a vibes based man myself because stalin has never become republicans did i say that Everyone has the capacity to become reactionary. Just to what you're doing here, are you a supporter of the views of Palestinian people? I am an American who is actually here to listen to the views of people who disagree with me. Now, one of the reasons I, I am I'm supporting this election, of Israel. Do I, I support the United States, and because of that, I support Israel right. and our relationship. You with support it. I think it's forty thousand Palestinians in the last ten months. So look, I think that. The truth is there was an attack that precipitated it. No, no, the truth and we can't is, ignore listen, that. Dude, I'm, we can't I don't ignore play that those kinds of games. I'm an organizer. I'm not one of your... But I'm also pragmatist. I'm not one of these people you're not a party, that you're a acolyte of yours. You're not a partisan I'm not hack an for the I'm not a hack for you or for the Democrats or for the Republicans or nobody else. I got you. I'm asking you yep. that you have no right to be here if you're not in support of the Palestinian people. Well, I think And if that you're not going to call here's what for I believe. an end to it... You have the right to if be you're here. You're not going to call. So do we in return. To the, and an end to the. Yes. Trot just hates Stalin. Everything bad in communism is Stalin. Trotsky was the heir of communism, and Stalin was just a meanie bad boy. Um, I think, like, look, I'm not. I joke about not reading, and I'm not anti-intellectualist by any means. But I do think that I do think that ultimately, maybe historically, some of these guys have had a tendency to be in academia and have uh, maybe pushed their resentment uh, against Stalin and as a resentment against the USSR as a whole and played a formative work in creating a lot of the things that you regurgitate right now, old school tendencies and old school leanings, like the word tanky, you know, like a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the critiques of, of communism in action, even if it ultimately becomes a failure, Right. And the the um, lack of interest in trying to examine uh, previous the the lack of interest in examining like previous uh, socialist uh, projects in general oftentimes stems from academic sentiment that comes from intellectual leftists who more often than not are trots. A lot of former trots became vigorously anti-communist and founded the neoconservative movement. See Bill Crystal's father. And the end of support of Israel, then you should take off. We don't want you here. You're not welcome here. Well, the, the good news is we're America, and so we actually get to all express ourselves really? peacefully. You get to express being our... You get to express... You get to on, look at what Western Marxist academics produce. Their children become neolibs, a.k.a. Kamala Harris and Pete. Yes. Um... Same concepts as the Western Maoists talking about how the PRC must be destroyed by the West because they're revisionists or some. Yeah, ultimately, I think a lot of I'll just say it like this. A lot of anti-capitalist movements, I guess, because they're like completely outside of the confines of like normal politics in the Western world, especially in the aftermath of the Cold War uh, with no one to like steer them in a direction, uh, oftentimes end up fractioning off 
uh, into a million different pieces over uh, unique differences, like minor differences in agreement. And there are plenty of people that are in this community as well who come from those different tendencies. But there is a reason why I regularly, either on every different aspect of, of uh, every different kind of anti-capitalists under that umbrella, but I also routinely will tell everyone that ultimately it doesn't matter as long as you are anti-capitalist, okay? Like, so basically when the splinter discord splinters into a different discord, yes. To express I, I, being a Zionist I, I pig? I, I, I is that what you get to express? I'm, I'm pro-American. Want... This guy's cooking. Hold on. I want to run him back. He's doing a great job. What are you doing here? Are you a supporter of the against the Palestinian people? You should on every tendency except your own. What's my tendency? Also, you said expect. I have a tendency to serve the top of the hour ad break. Okay. Are you a DSA member? I am not. I also make fun of the DSA from time to time too. I mean, I support them. I make fun of the PSL from time to time, but I support them. Yes, I'm a Hojaist. I do have a tendency to serve you three minute ad breaks. Everyone's calling me Unk on Twitter because I asked if Monkas was a slur. Yeah. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. Chatters. You can subscribe for $6 or for free with a Twitch Prime if you no longer want to see those ads. Here's the three minute ad break now. I am an American who is actually here to listen to the views of people who disagree with me. Now, one of the reasons I, I am I'm supporting a candidate a supporter in this election. Of Israel? Do I, I support the United States and because of that I support Israel right. and our relationship with them. You support that is 40,000 Palestinians in the last 10 months. So look, I think that the truth is there was an attack that precipitated it. No, no, dude, dude I'm, I don't play that those kinds of games. I'm an organizer. I'm not one of your... I'm also <laughs> pragmatist. I'm not one of these people you're not a party. that you're... This guy's sick. Uh, I, 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 he's, uh, this, I assume Freedom News uh, is not like this. I thought this entire video was just about him like talking to Trots about, I don't know, like permanent international revolution or whatever. But it turns out this guy is not, right? I don't think so. This is a totally different person. The acolyte of yours. You're not a partisan I'm hack for yours, otherwise. and I'm not a hack for you or for the Democrats or for the Republicans or nobody else. I got you. I'm asking you yep. that you have no right to be here if you're not in support of the oh. Palestinian people. Hatem Abudaya, our national chair and leading member of the Coalition of March on DNC 2024, kicks off today's press conference. Oh my God, I don't want to ask Grok anything, ever. I never want to ask Grok anything. God, I hate Twitter so much. I hate Twitter so much. Oh my God, I hate every website. I hate every website. They're so bad. Like Instagram, Instagram is also doing this where it's like, oh, it's not a search bar anymore. It's ask AI. It's like, no, I don't want to ask meta AI. I just want to know the username. I'm typing in the username. I want you to find which username I'm looking for. Everything is worse. Everything is worse. Everything is getting and, and worse. People. Well, I think and if that you're not going to call here's what for I an you, a, you have the right to if be you're here. You're not going to call. So do we in return. To the, and an end to the <laughs> of Israel, <laughs> then you should take off. We don't want you here. You're not welcome. I got to pee. Well, the, the good news is we're America and so we actually get to all express ourselves. Really express being our, you get to ex you get to express I, I, being I, I, a Zionist I, I, pig. I, I is that what you get to express? I'm pro American, but I believe in your right to speak. I believe in your right to speak your mind. I'm a racist go home. Racist go home! 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 So much of being a Republican is just about being annoying in different places. Hold on, what did they start yelling Yankee go home? Oh, crackhead Barney was there. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of do like uh, crackhead uh, Barney or crackhead Barbie, whatever her name is, when she's like, you know, annoying people like Vivek, who are who's already like profoundly unserious as a person. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she she's annoying. I don't really like it, but like, if she's gonna be annoying to a person like Vivek, then yeah, it's great. Do 
she's a tactical nuke yeah no someone said she's like a like a uh sovereign citizen I and like a first amendment auditor and you're so right dude you're so goddamn right that's exactly